السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليمًا كثيرًا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى 
هدى نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We begin with the praise of Allah Azza wa Jal We praise him We seek his help and we ask his forgiveness Whoever Allah Azza wa Jal guides there is none that can misguide him and whoever Allah Azza wa Jal misguides there is none that can guide him and I bear witness that there is no God that deserves to be worshipped except Allah alone and with no partner and I bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his slave and final messenger or you who believe have taqwa of Allah as he deserves that you have taqwa of him and do not die except as Muslims. Or mankind, have taqwa of your Lord who created you from a single soul and from that single soul he created his wife and from those two created many men and women. And have taqwa of Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and indeed Allah is ever watchful over you. Or you who believe have taqwa of Allah and speak a word that is true. He will correct your deeds and forgive your sins and whoever obeys Allah Azza wa Jal and his messenger has indeed achieved a great success to continue the best speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the worst of matters in this religion are the newly introduced actions those actions that were not done by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nor by his companions, but they were introduced into the religion after that. And all of these newly introduced actions, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he termed them to be innovation and all innovation is misguidance. And he told us that all misguidance is in the fire. My brothers and sisters in Islam, from the characteristics of the Muslim, is that we take a lesson we take lessons and we take thought from the things that happen around us and the events that happen around us Allah Azza wa Jal told us in the Quran قَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ آيَةٌ فِي فِئَتَيْنِ الْتَقَتَ فِئَةٌ تُقَاتِلُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَأُخْرَى كَافِرَةٌ يَرَوْنَهُمْ مِثْلَيْهِمْ رَأْيَ الْعَيْنِ وَاللَّهُ يُؤَيِّدُ بِنَصْرِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ there was certainly a sign for you in the two groups that met. One group that was fighting for the sake of Allah and the other that were disbelievers who saw them to be double in sight. And Allah gives help with his, or Allah gives his help to whoever he wills. And in that there is a lesson for a people of sight or insight. Allah Azza wa Jal told us in this ayah, that one of the characteristics of the believer is that things don't pass you by without you taking a lesson from them. You see the events that happen around the world and you take an ibrah. You take a lesson or lessons from them. And you don't allow such things to pass you by. You take them as an opportunity to return to Allah Azza wa Jal and to remember Him. And to remember the purpose of this life that you are in. Unlike the munafiq, the hypocrite, who allows these things to pass them by and they never remember Allah nor do they ever repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. As Allah Azza wa Jal told us, أَوَلَا يَرَوْنَ أَنَّهُمْ يُفْتَنُونَ فِي كُلِّ عَامٍ مَرَّةً أَوْ مَرَّتَيْنِ ثُمَّ لَا يَتُوبُونَ وَلَا هُمْ يَذَّكَّرُونَ Do they not see that trials happen to them every year, once a year or twice and they never repent nor do they remember? So from the characteristics of the Muslim is that we take a lesson from what we see and we take the events that happen around us as an opportunity to repent to Allah and to remember Allah Azza wa Jal. And from the things that Allah Azza wa Jal has told us about and among the tests and trials that Allah Azza wa Jal has told us about is what he mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ 
وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ We are certainly going to test you with something of fear and hunger and a loss of wealth and a loss of life and a loss of fruits and give glad tidings to the patient. Those when they are afflicted with a calamity, they say, indeed, we are for Allah and to Allah we will return. It is they who have salawat from their Lord and mercy and it is they who will be guided. Particularly among these things, Allah Azza wa Jal decrees certain events that happen and these events and these trials and these tests and these calamities from among the most severe of them are those that don't distinguish between the good person and the bad. They don't distinguish between the believer and the disbeliever. Rather, everyone is affected by them and they touch everyone equally regardless of their righteousness or their wickedness. As Allah Azza wa Jal told us in the Quran, وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ Protect yourself from a trial that doesn't just afflict the oppressive people among you. And know that Allah is severe in punishment. And the hadith of our mother Zainab رضي الله تعالى عنها that she said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, will we be destroyed? وَفِينَ الصَّالِحُونَ When there are righteous people among us. قَالَ نَعَمْ إِذَا كَثُرَ الْخَبَثِ He said, yes, if filthiness and wickedness in the society increases, this is the time when trials come and tests come that don't distinguish between the Muslim and between the non-Muslim and they don't distinguish between the righteous and between the wicked, rather every single person is affected by them or many people are affected by them. And they might kill and destroy many people who were righteous and many people who were wicked. And this is from one of the tests and trials that it's not right for a Muslim to let this pass them by without taking a lesson from it. And all of you know the situation. وَلَا يَخْفَى عَلَيْكُمْ it's not hidden from you the situation that is going on in the world today and this sickness that is spreading and virus that is spreading all around to afflict many people and many places. And it is also from those things like Allah said, It doesn't only touch the wicked people, rather it affects, it affects the wicked and the righteous and it affects the one who is near to Allah and the one who is far from Allah Azza wa Jal. And it doesn't distinguish between them. It doesn't make a difference between them. So I wanted to look at this today in a different way. To take this time in this khutbah to give some advice, some of the lessons that we can take from this. And some of the things that we should be doing or implementing in our lives when we see such things happening around the world and perhaps even start to happen in places that are not far away from us, what kind of lessons should we be taking? What kind of things should we be doing? What kind of advice should we be giving? And that is the topic that I wanted to deal with today. And as I said to you, my very first piece of advice is that you don't let this kind of event pass you by without taking a lesson from it. And the lesson that the Muslim takes from these general calamities that affect people all over the world, is they turn to Allah. They repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. They remember that they live for Allah and they die for Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We are for Allah. Our life is for Allah. And to Allah we will return. We remember, and from the lessons that we have to take, is that we remember death. We remember death. And Allah Azza wa Jal told us, Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul mawt wa nabalukum bisharri wal khayri fitna wa ilayna turja'oon. Every single soul will taste death. Every single soul will taste death. And we test you with evil and good as a trial. And to us, you will be returned. So from this, the Muslim takes when he sees so many people dying. And he's told 
that it is only a short time. Well, ilmu and the knowledge is with Allah before it spreads here and there. And before this death touches more and more people, a Muslim remembers that whatever happens to you, you are going to die. There will come a day when you and I, every one of us is going to die. Kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut. Every single soul will taste death. Everyone. Whether it is today or tomorrow or next week or next year or in 10 years or in 50 years or more or less, every one of you will die. So you prepare for it. How is it that you can see so many people around the world dying and yet the Muslim doesn't think that one day I'm going to return to Allah Azza wa Jal and prepare for it. And Allah Azza wa Jal puts these tests and trials on the earth and one of the benefits and the wisdoms in it is that you look at this and you remember what will happen to you and you prepare for it. You prepare for it. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood at the grave of a man and one of the things he said is to his companions, he said, he said to them, prepare for a day like this. Prepare yourselves like this. Prepare yourselves for this. So a Muslim reflects regardless of whether they are young or old, regardless of whether they have a fear for themselves or they don't. They prepare themselves for what is certainly going to come. And they think about these issues. From the advice, and I believe this is extremely important advice that I would give to everybody, is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah An-Nisa. وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِّنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوِ الْخَوْفِ أَذَاعُوا بِهِ وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُلِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ وَلَوْ لَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ لَاتَّبَعْتُمُ الشَّيْطَانَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Allah Azza wa Jal talks about the munafiq, the hypocrite. And he says that one of the characteristics of the hypocrite is when there comes to him news that affects everyone about public safety and fear. Something that is affecting everyone, like the news of this virus, that affects everybody. They spread all kinds of things around and everyone has their own opinion and they spread it around to people. And Allah says, if they returned it back to the Rasul and to the people who were in control, i.e. the ulama and the umara. And here in this country where we don't have Muslim rulers over us, especially to return it to the ulama, the scholars, then the people who had knowledge, they would be able to take the right rulings out for you. And if it were not for the grace of Allah and his mercy, you would have followed the shaitan except for a little. So Allah Azza wa Jal tells us, especially in matters that affect everybody, in matters that affect the whole ummah or huge numbers of people, we need to go back to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we need to go back to Ulul Amr, the people of authority and like the scholars of Tafsir said, they are the ulama and the umara. They are the scholars and the people in authority over you. So it's not right for people to spread rumors or to make individual decisions and to impose them on other people. Rather, they should go back to the scholars and the people of knowledge and they should get the knowledge of what they need before it happens. And in this, I'm going to give you some advice. Because when we talk about this particular situation that we are in, we see that the advice is of different categories. So the first thing is you receive some advice from a medical professional or from a government advisor, maybe someone who is not a Muslim, and that advice involves the mubahat, the things which are halal, like washing your hands a little bit more, like taking care on certain things. There is no harm for a Muslim to follow this advice. In fact, it is beneficial for them to follow that advice. When it involves the mubahat, the things which are halal, there is no issue with a Muslim following that advice, taking care to wash their hands a little more and those kind of things. There is no harm in them following that advice immediately. Likewise, if there is advice which is strong advice and it involves leaving off a sunnah, something which is mustahab, like leaving off shaking hands, for example, then there is no harm in this also. Since shaking hands is not a wajib from the wajibat, it's not an obligation. It's a sunnah. 
So if a person fears or a person receives reliable information that it is better for them to leave off from this, then there is no harm in them leaving off from that either because it is a sunnah and it's not an obligation. But where it's very important for people to go back to the people of knowledge is when we talk about leaving the fard. When we talk about leaving the fard, like people talk about leaving the Jumu'ah or closing the masjid for the jama'ah and things like that, that these decisions should be made by the people of knowledge and they should be referred back to by the most knowledgeable people that we have access to. Because these issues are serious in the life of a Muslim and we should take it seriously. So in these issues where it involves leaving off a fard or it involves doing something which would normally be haram, then in these issues the Muslims they need to go back to the people of knowledge and they need to do that before they take action because knowledge precedes action. فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكْ Know that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and then seek forgiveness for your sins. Also in this is that a person is cautious about listening to rumors and spreading rumors. As Allah Azza wa Jal said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in jaakum fasiqum bi naba'in fatabayyanu an tusibu qawman bi jahala فَتُصْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ Or you who believe, if there comes to you a disobedient person with some news, then make sure of it. Unless you harm or so that you don't harm a people out of ignorance and then become regretful over what you have done. This is some words or these are some words of advice. And insha'Allah ta'ala in the second part of the khutbah we're going to continue with our advice on how we as Muslims can take a lesson from this event that is happening around us and some of the things that we should or shouldn't be doing. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه يغفر لكم إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise is due to Allah alone and we ask Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to our messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to his family and his companions In this khutbah we've been talking about the fact that the events that happen around us, the major events, the major fitan and masaib calamities that happen around us, we shouldn't just let them go over our head and ignore them. That we should take a lesson from them. And we spoke about some of the advice and some of the lessons that we can take from this situation and this sickness that is spreading around the world. And from the lessons that is extremely important for every single Muslim to take is to remember that shifa is in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. As Allah Azza wa, Azza wa Jal reported, or as Allah Azza wa Jal told us that Ibrahim said in the Quran, وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ And when I become sick, it is Allah Azza wa Jal that cures me. And that doesn't stop you taking your precautions. Because Allah Azza wa Jal told us in Surah Al-Ma'idah, وَخُذُوا حِذْرَكُمْ Take your precautions. And Allah Azza wa Jal told us, وَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ If you have done your best, then put your reliance upon Allah. So the Muslim is balanced in this. We take our precautions. And there is no harm in that. We take our precautions. And this is from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam To be careful, to be cautious. وَخُذُوا حِذْرَكُمْ Take your precautions. But at the same time, we remember that our the events that happen to us are in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. So we put our trust in Allah Azza wa Jal to cure us. And this is a balanced approach. It's balanced between two extremes. On one extreme, you have those people who take every precaution 
but they believe those precautions will save them. And wallahi, they will not save you unless Allah Azza wa Jal wills for them to save you. And on the other extreme are those people who don't take any precautions at all. And they perform tawakul, not tawakkul. They sit down and they say, if Allah wants to infect me, I will be infected. And if Allah wants to cure me, he will cure me. And they don't do anything to protect themselves. But the Muslim is not with them or with them. Rather, you take your precautions. You take your precautions. And you realize that the affair is in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. And you put your trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And one of the ways that you can show this belief is by seeking a cure from Allah Azza wa Jal. And I want to remind you of a forgotten sunnah, which so many people have forgotten and is so relevant in our time. And that is using the Quran as a means of seeking a cure from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala said, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا Allah said in Surah Al-Isra, we sent down from the Quran that which is shifa and a mercy for the believers. And it doesn't increase the wrongdoers in anything except loss. And our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as is reported by our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana idha shtaka yaqra'u ala nafsihi bil mu'awwidhat. That if he used to get sick, like a fever, or a flu, or a virus, he would read over himself al muawwidat wa nafath, and he would blow. So he would read qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq, and qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas. And some of the reports mention qul hu allahu ahad, and some of the sahaba used to recite surah al-fatiha, and others from the surahs and the ayat of the Quran, to read over yourself, to blow over yourself, and so on to seek a cure from Allah Azza wa Jal, just like you hope that you go to, for example, a, a pharmacy or a doctor and you take a medicine and you hope that Allah will make it a means to cure you, more deserving than that is that you don't forget that the Quran was sent down as a cure and you seek a cure from the noble Quran. My dear brothers in Islam, these are just a few words of advice. And I want to emphasize again the point that I spoke about earlier for those people who perhaps came late and didn't hear it. We spoke about in matters that affect the whole community, it's very important that we go back to the people of knowledge. Matters that affect everybody. Something that's going to affect the entire community or the entire city or the entire country or the entire Muslim world. We go back to the people of knowledge. And we don't behave like the munafiqeen, like Allah described them. They just talk about it among themselves and they spread it around among themselves. So as we said, when it comes to sensible advice that involves leaving a sunnah or doing something which is permissible, then there is no harm in following that and doing it quickly. There is no harm in that. And perhaps Allah Azza wa Jal will make it a means for people to be protected. But when it comes to matters that are serious, like leaving the fard and so on, then these things, they need to be referred back to the people of knowledge. And that is in your locality that you go back to the imam of your masjid and he goes back to the other imams in his locality and the people of knowledge. And then he refers it back to the ulama, the major scholars that we have access to. And together they come to a conclusion and they report it to people and bi idnillahi ta'ala this methodology would save the people as Allah azza wa jal said from following the way of the shaitan that's what Allah azza wa jal made it easy to mention in this regard thumma sallu wa sallimu ra'akumullah ala muhammad ibn abdullah kama amarakum bi dhalika rabbukum fa qala qawlan karima inna allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala an nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. 
اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا وجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير والموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه وآلائه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استو اعتدلوا سو صفوفكم فإن تسوية الصف من تمام الصلاة استو الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى 
إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى